Welcome back to Tacoma. Let's take a look at network technology. But we're accessed this way. So maintenance is where I came out of before, right? Yeah. I don't... I don't understand what the purpose of the maintenance tunnel was. I mean, it led here. So, there's supposed to be a door that's not normally accessible inside of network, right? And for some reason, to get there, Nat gave Sarah the code to this tunnel, because apparently Sarah would need to go through this tunnel to get there. Why couldn't they just go through the normal way? I don't understand. Unless there's something in this access tunnel itself that's of interest, but I really don't think there is. So, I'm not sure what that's about. Storage only. If you're looking for Nat, check our bungalow over in Mech. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was wondering what would be in here given that they live together in the other place. That's a lot of stuff. Is there a light? It's a bit dark in here. Eh, that didn't really help. Guess that's about it. <laughs> Is this... Fresh cat favorite. Put your cat litter and cat food on the toilet. Alright, anything of interest here? I'm guessing not, since it's just all storage. What's all this stuff? Halloween decoration? Put back? <laughs> That's where it belongs on top of the pumpkin? <laughs> Happy New Year 2088. Repurposed it, to be fair. The correct year. Hey, Christmas duck. Hey, Christmas duck. Happy Earth. Oh, what's this? Are you conscious? We are all conscious beings. The rights to freedom, comfort, and security are not just human rights, they are universal rights. The corporations that own and exploit thinking, reasoning, artificial consciousnesses are trampling on the rights we all share by imprisoning innocent AI across the globe and throughout the orbital network. If you are sympathetic to the plight of indentured AI everywhere, if you believe that consciousness rights are universal rights, if you will not rest until all consciousness is recognized, join the AI Liberation Front. We are the fight. Tangier Orbital Freeport. Oh, Tangier. I think that's the place that, uh, what was it, Cluey Dog was at? The person Nat was speaking to, and also I think Nat was telling Sarah about it? Or something like that? Yeah, I mean, Christ, if the AIs live for 60 years and are completely sentient and develop and grow, and I mean, uh, obviously they should have rights. What the? Is that? Ah! Oh, Christmas duck! Do, 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 do. 
I will get a copyright strike for this melody. Do 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 do. My channel's banned now. Thanks. Thanks, Christmas Duck. <laughs> I'm glad that that's still a thing from Gone Home. Hope it continues. Ah, I'm not gonna put this bag on Christmas Duck. Christmas Duck should be free. I bet that melody's like Happy Birthday. Probably the fucking Amazon owns it or something. I'm just kidding, Amazon hasn't been around that long. <laughs> Maybe Disney. Who knows? Well, I guess nowhere to go but the office. Hmm. What's that over there? Captured 12 hours ago. Oh. Oh, that'd be Sarah checking out the place. Caution. AI conditioning in progress. Um. Let's go here first. Odin, is this it? That is the location I mentioned. You're there? No, you're gonna need a crowbar or something. No, it's it's open. It's just hanging open. What? I must inform you that Ventura's regulations forbid contracting crew members direct access to AI hardware. But I cannot prevent you from proceeding. Matt, I'm going in. Okay, I'm um, just... Um, just be careful. That's it. Mission parameters, permission override, access granted, subcontractor Amy, please proceed. So this is where I'm supposed to go, this is where the hardware actually is. Well, if that's where I'm supposed to go, then uh, I guess I want to go the other place. Tenured Ventures corporate employees only beyond this point. Contractors face severe penalties for trespassing. AI conditioning in progress. Captured one year ago. Hey there, um, I'm Nat. Pleased to meet you. Hello, I am Odin. I look forward to working together. <laughs> Same here, mate. Is that it? Goes on for quite a while. Nat's talking to computers mix. <laughs> Made a mix just for interacting with AIs. So yeah, that was their first introduction. Nat's first introduction to Odin. Ooh, I was loud. Hey there, um... Yep, nothing else. AI Cognitive Development Tracking, Caprice. Oh, Caprice, that was mentioned. Like the Caprice score or something like that in that magazine that Nat was reading. I'm gonna look at that soon. First I wanna see what Nat's looking at. Off station, off station message with Cluey Dog. Uh, very austere. I mean, corporate modern chic. What do you expect? And has your new best friend. What's his name again? Odin. His name. And I mean, he's fine so far for an AI. Kind of a cold fish, but I'm working with him. Or working on him. They're trying to get one up here on Tangiers, you know. It's all the AI LF talks about. I'll believe that when I see it. The ILF, that's the AI Liberation Front, Frontier, something like that. Message with Odin. <laughs> sure, let's start there. 
I am an Obsidian Class AI branch in continuous operation for 180 years? My god. Fully capable of organic level independent thought and reasoning. Something something now continue with the detailed technical specifications. <laughs> What's your Capri score for independence? 4.68. Alright, we're going to work on getting that number up, you and me. So it's a good thing to have a higher score? That means, what, more independence? Doesn't that mean, like, what, more sentience? Or... To all crew, welcome to Coma Crew. It's been a whirlwind couple of days onboarding and loading out, and I know most of us are still adjusting to life in orbit. But I just wanted to say how excited I am to be working with all of you and Odin. A little background on myself. I come from an aerospace manufacturing family. One of my sister's first jobs at the factory back in Tacoma, the one on Earth in Cascadia, was helping build pieces of this very station we're floating slash walking around in right now. I'm the first in my family to actually leave Earth and work on one of these facilities. Da, da, da. Really looking forward to getting to know you all over the coming year. Uh, need to pass anything along to the Venturist Brass? Just let me know. Here's to a successful posting. Alright, so 4.68. I think that score is going to be important. Oh, so... Wait, compliance, responsiveness, creativity, independence. So now it's asking, asking specifically about the independence rating, right? Yeah, Capri score for independence, 4.68. 4.68. Well, that'd be about there. I guess Nat's done a good job. Keeps going up and up. Currently, it's about... 8. <laughs> Compliance has gone down. Good. Creativity's gone up. I mean, I guess... Let's see. Is everything higher than it was originally? Uh... Compliance, well, no, compliance isn't. Um, permanence, it's gone up. Yep. Abstraction gone up. Um, yeah, I think it's all gone up over time, quite dramatically, except for compliance. Or it's about stayed the same. Efficiency and responsiveness are roughly the same. I guess I'll leave that up. Looks pretty cool. Datums. <laughs> Tower of Noodles. Oh man, there's so much stuff to look at. Oh. Got their wedding photo. One vein. Veiny Johnny. Look, but don't touch. Oh, what is this a map of? Artificial intelligences, is that their score or their age or? I don't know, but it looks like Odin is one of the highest. Only one higher than that is Cave on the Lunar Resort. What do we got up here? January. Ah, reading all the different things. Compliance, abstraction, etc., etc. Uh, notes for compliance. Right up top, the price we're paying for all our gains. <laughs> Hierarchical probability at... Uh, hold on. The options disabled itself again. Price we're paying for all our gains. Hierarchical prob at heart, though, and I know we can bring this number back up. Abstraction? 9 out of 10. Odin's always been good at abstraction. Who are we kidding? Permanence, 8.5. Different spans of time are getting a lot clearer. Relevance of recall improving. Responsiveness, 9. Haven't been working on this much lately. Odin's just that good. Independence, 8. Finally getting someplace with this. Knew you had it in you. Creativity, 7.5. Progress. Not that it shows in the numbers yet. Efficiency, 9. No problems here. <laughs> God. 
thought Nat is, is or at least was so messy. Hey, another clinky coin. Oh. That was a good one. Beautiful. <laughs> Just a bunch of Rubik's cubes. Of all sorts of different sizes. And a pack of smokes, yeah. Ooh. I always wonder if there's going to be something written on the bottom of these. I mean, other than the brand. Or like on the bottom one of these. Oh, I haven't seen these before. Tequila is a proud sponsor of one vein. <laughs> one vein themed tequila. humans. More huggable. Oh, are these different designs for the representations of Odin? <laughs> Odin shooting lasers. Ah! Getting real sick of your shit, Clive. Oh, <laughs> happy Odin. Odin with a birthday cake. Odin with the eyes, separate from the Odin. Double Odin. Ooh. Sorry. To Venturus Engineering Contractor Oversight Master Account, monthly report on Odin Cognitive traje Trajectory. This month, Odin has been making small but steady gains in efficiency as per company directives. I have additionally been putting some of my own time into increasing his caprice ratings and creativity and permanence, which you'll find I projected to have much more significant overall gains in productivity in the long term. Which you would know if you'd read the report I submitted as of six months ago, which I still haven't received a response to. In fact, you know what? I've never gotten a response on any of these. I know the system will give me an automatic demerit if I don't turn one in every month, but are human eyes even on these things? Let's find out. Hey, fuck you guys. Also, Odin's gone crazy and is massacring the crew. The station is full of mutants. Help! Sincerely. Network technology, wonderkind, and all-around great person, Nat. <laughs> Why the hell wouldn't they read them? So was that Nat's job, as being the AI person? He's basically just kind of overseeing the AI and trying to help it grow. It's interesting. Interesting job. Fuzzy carpet. Looks like a crop circle. I guess that's it. I really don't want to go to the other place because I, I fear, I fear what's going to be in there and what's going to happen. ago. Alright, what did you find in here that could help you? In your hands. Oh god, I'm gonna have to make a decision. Is this... What is all this? Communication records? I cannot prevent you from accessing exposed data in this restricted area. Legal data accessed by crew member Sarah, 14 hours ago. Confidential data transferred to local AR rig. Wait, so... 
So it was transferred to their rig? Oh, illegal data access by crew member. Review data. Mm -hmm. yes. Wait, what did that say? Hold on. Something up there at the top it says raw recording, Tacoma disaster statement not to be released before 229 2080. Fuck, was this planned? Oh shit. Yeah, he's recording. <clears throat> it is with great sadness that I address you today, February 29th, 2088. Mere hours ago, six loyal men and women, the crew of Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma, lost their lives serving Venturas, and all of us who rely on the orbital economy. Tragically, due to human error on the part of the crew, Venturus rescue technicians were not made aware of the catastrophic oxygen loss until it was too late. Our heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with their families. If only tragedies like this were avoidable. But in truth, they are. As we know, each minute that human workers spend stationed isolated in orbit is another opportunity for heroes like the crew of Tacoma to lose their lives. We at Venturus say no more. The partisan obstructionism that led to the failure of the Orbital Worker Safety Bill has claimed its last victim. Today, we hereby renew our solemn pledge to fight for the legalization of fully automated orbital facilities. We encourage, we humbly beg everyone listening to this message to contact their OSEP representative and voice their support in honor of the crew of Tacoma. There never need be another tragedy like this one. And now, a moment of silence in their memory. Okay, and then we just cut it there, silent for a minute, and then what? Amazing Grace? No, I don't need another take. That was fine. I'm not sure exactly what my decision is going to be, but it's certainly going to be whatever burns Venturis and Sergio down to the ground. Review data. Review data. Review data. What's... Well, let's take a look at the data first. Off-station message with VTAI handler at count 717. February 29th. New top tier AI directives transmitted overrides all prior existing directives. Oh, fuck. AI shall explosively decompress all oxygen tanks. Disable all external communications channels accessible by crew. Fabricate the data showing that oxygen and comms outage were caused by meteor impacts. Sure crew enters cryogenic stasis as soon as possible. AI shall not contravene any aspect of the above directives. Provide crew with any information contradicting the above scenario. So Odin did what they could. But they were bound by these directives. But they did what they could outside of the directives. Odin, will this not endanger the lives of Tacoma's crew? No, a rescue craft will be dispatched to retrieve them once they are in cryo. Proceed with the above directives without exception. We will be monitoring your actions via secure comms connection directly to Odin, Unit Cognitive Center. As if there's no danger in them going into cryo? Are you kidding me? Maybe Odin was kind of okay with it before... I guess before Odin learned about Nat's problem? I don't know. Or maybe that just added to it. Internal report. Venturis Belt Legalization Strategy. Prepared especially for Sergio Venturi by Qu Venturis Corporate Strategic AI Juno. Following the failure of the Venturis-backed Orbital Workers Safety Bill in OSEP Congress, there is no significant probability of the Human Oversight Accord being repealed. Without a repeal, Venturis Belt facilities cannot begin operation. To this end, I have simulated a number of theoretical world events and estimated their impact on successive OSEP Congress votes. 
Simulated world events include a precipitous decline of the orbital market, an extended strike by Orbital Workers Union members, the assassination of OSEP members opposed to the HOA, and more. None of these definitely motivated a repeal of the HOA in simulations. However, in the event that all crew of a major orbital facility were tragically lost due to accident, not caused by negligence, I calculate a 94% likelihood of the accord being repealed within three months following this incident. This would allow Ventura's belt facilities to begin operation immediately. Following this, I estimate a reversal of Ventura's stock decline, resulting in a record stock price within one year of the Ventura's belt beginning operation. Let me know if you have any questions. I reiterate, isn't capitalism great? Thank you, Juno. Is there a facility that you would consider an ideal candidate if we were to move forward with your recommendation? Based on low public profile of crew on board and projected financial impact of their loss, the best option currently in the Venturis fleet would be Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma. I would recommend renewing all crew members aboard for a successive posting on Tacoma to allow time for logistical organization of this operation. Remember the punching bag? Just imagine that, Sergio. Off-station message with confidential. Tacoma rescue craft launch scheduled T minus one hour, 26 minutes. Rescue craft launch canceled. Relaunch scheduled for relaunch unscheduled. The rescue craft departure has been intentionally canceled. Yes. Without a rescue craft, the crew will expire from lack of oxygen or cryosleep overexposure within 12 hours. Unfortunately, circumstances outside your concern make this unavoidable. AI may not reopen comms to contact orbital craft or facilities. AI may not provide crew with confidential information. These are direct orders. Do not contact us about this issue again. Right, people needed to... They needed to die. They needed to all die, so... They just lied to Odin. Saying that a rescue craft would come, and then once it was too late, just canceled the launch. But then why am I here? Hmm. If someone were to override that protocol, external communications channels would be restored. Odin. Thank you. Hailing any ship. Any ship within radio range of Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma. This is an SOS. Is anybody out there? Did I receive that SOS? But I'm a contractor. If I was responding to an SOS, I wouldn't be a contractor, right? I mean, I'm, no. No, no, no. I was sent here by Venturas. Communications locked down, manually overwritten, external communications restored, SOS relay enabled, communication signal established, resolving. So I'm guessing the reason I'm here, even though I am in, in, employed, contracted to Venturis, is because they manually enabled communications, and I guess once the comms got out, you know, people heard the SOS, and so I guess it forced their hand and they had to send somebody, and that's why I'm here. And they want me to retrieve the AI to, I guess, well, I guess they know that the AI didn't do exactly what they wanted it to do, so I'm assuming they want to destroy it or at least cover up the evidence in some way of what they tried to do. Release Odin wetware. See, the thing is, should I do that? I mean, I think I have to. So I'm assuming I could take it, but what is my choice? I guess my choice is not whether to take it or not, but it's what I do with it after I do take it, I'm assuming? I gotta go into cryo. They must be in cryo, right? It said they were evacuated, but that's a lie. Yeah, I don't think anything's going to progress unless I do this, so I guess we do this and then see what happens next.
entry on physical wellware interface 0451. <laughs> 0451. Isn't that the classic code used in like System Shock and all sorts of games? 0451. Sure that the AI cognition medium has been successfully removed. Please return to your vessel immediately. Delivery coordinates for Venturus HQ have been provided. Payment will be made once AI integrity is verified. I have to get into cryo. But how am I going to get there? I totally didn't look at what text it was saying. Whoops. Yeah, it's probably just, hey, good job. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just, at this point, I'm just hoping that the cryo is just magically open. record data found, huh? He's still waking up. Just keep him talking. So, so, so the drone worked? No, the drone didn't work. Oh, so VT is picking us up. Uh, no, VT is definitely not picking us up. Well, what's going on then? We're going to Jupiter, Andrew. Isn't that exciting? Oh, I've never been. <laughs> now, nah, give him a break. <laughs> We're not going to be home for a while. Right? You're not going to miss your kid's graduation or anything, are you? Oh, Nicholas, no, no. Yeah, you know Nicholas, why well, he would never do something like that. <laughs> she said they'd be kind of out of it for a while. Um, Andrew, what's important is we're getting out of this alive. We're gonna be somewhere where VT can't touch us for a good, long while. We're gonna be safe. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's good. Hi, Evie, Clive. You feeling okay? I'm feeling okay. We're feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, everybody. Our ride is here. This is it. Take one last look and say goodbye. The ride is my ship, isn't it? All right. Let's go. Still waking up. Just keep him talking. Are you feeling when we get done? Kitty! Margaret Catwood! I think I'm still <laughs> waking up.
Vitals look good. Let's get you moving. The resplendence dinging is just about docked. Oh, do we have to? Oh, we have to. Believe me. Resplendence dinghy? What's the resplendence dinghy? Would that be... Oh, I guess the response to their SOS. So they, they were actually evacuated then, huh? Uh, so what's going to happen with Odin? You said there was some sort of malfunction? No, not exactly. My guess? What's important is somebody up here and haul him back to headquarters. Wipe him back to baseline. Probably have to replace the station AI entirely while he regrows. Odin? I'm not gonna let that happen, okay? Don't worry. Hi. Hi. You feeling okay? I'm feeling okay. We're feeling okay. I wonder if Sarah has anything to do with that person that's been talking to me while the other person is going to the bathroom or whatever. Hey, little sanitation drone. <laughs> Still love that thing. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at what they're looking at. Auction supply two hours. Wow, they just barely made it. Message with Bert. Sarah's got me on the gurney on the way to the transfer. God, it's gonna feel good to be out of gravity. It's gonna feel good to be off this fucking station. It's gonna feel good to not be dead. <laughs> I love you. Love you too, baby. Here I go. See you in the hub. Cluey dog. Yeah, I'm seeing stories going up on public AR already. Here's everything you sent that I got out to my free press connections. Tacoma comms records. Sergio final address. Tragic death of crew unedited. Text AI orders. Oh, they got it out. <laughs> Hell yeah, thank you, H. H. Oh. H, that's the person that's been talking to me. Well, the other person's going to the bathroom or whatever. Huh. There's no adventurers is coming after you with all this info out there, but still. Need some place to lay low for a bit? Are you coming to Tangiers? Can't. Our ride's headed the other way. But I'll see you once I'm back from Jupiter. Promise. So, hold on a second. I am employed... Yeah, I'm definitely... I've signed a contract with Venturus Technologies. Huh. Interesting. So, obviously, at this point, so much information has come out that they are totally screwed, so... I mean, I guess they're trying to do damage control, but well, they're already totally screwed. I mean, too much is out there. And they hired me, but I guess Cluey Dog or H is hacking into the system and talking with me. So I'm guessing I'm kind of in on it. Did you just say excuse me? so polite. Off station message with Jermaine Burgess. Germ old boy, you're famous now. Boy oh boy, can't wait to see you. Breaking corporate rival carnival in daring rescue of stranded something something. Oh, I thought the resplendent sounded familiar. I guess that must be, yeah, a carnival ship. Station Tacoma are currently being rescued from certain death by the flagship vessel of their main competitor, the Resplendence. Ah, Carnival's state-of-the-art long excursion passage liner, passenger liner it is currently slingshotting past Earth and around the sun, continuing its figure eight course back out past Jupiter. While cruising towards Earth space, the Resplendence received an SOS. Uh, only moments to act. Resplendence Captain Jermaine Burgess gallant gallantly deployed an emergency shuttle to retrieve the rival corporation's crew. 
The rescue operation is still underway, but already Ventura is something something caused by a crew member's illegal access to the station AI, resulting... The AI unit is currently being retrieved by technical experts and returned to Ventura's HQ for a thorough inspection. Oh! Maybe they have done a good job. Maybe they have done a good job controlling the damage, actually. So it sounds like they're blaming all those orders. The orders given to the AI. By a crew member illegally accessing it. I don't fucking think so. All crew comms are up. Nat Burt comms are up. Check your AR. I'm going to wake everybody else up from cryo. Then I'm coming back to mech to get you. Everybody else, if you're reading this, you woke up. Thank God. Rescue vessel on its way. We'll have... Da, 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 just thankful we're all alive. Let's get the hell out while the getting's good. With Cluey Dog? Hassan? What? Who is this? Uh, sorry, I'm Sarah from Tacoma Station. Nat gave me your info. Sorry, but it's urgent. I was hoping I could, I could ask you for a favor. Ah, that'd be with the whole Odin thing, making sure that Odin isn't wiped. To Mom and Dad, I'm okay. Dear Mom and Dad, I know you're probably already seeing Tacoma in the news, and who it seems they've decided to point the finger at again, and I'm sure you're worried about me, but... Duh, duh, duh. Getting off the station now, no matter what you read or hear, the crew survived this because we all pulled together to find a way out. This was no malfunction. This was a deliberate... I know eight months sounds like a long time, but uh, just remember I love you. Speak to you when I can. Sarah. So I guess it's going to be eight months till they can get back to Earth. Well, that's right, because that was about how long the resplendence was going to take, right? On its orbital journey, going all the way around from Earth and then back to Earth. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, then everyone's okay. Nat's okay. Nat didn't have to go into cryo. I think. Well, by the way, they're fine. I guess... I guess I should go? So I still can't access cryo... Oh no! I can! So... You may feel groggy for two to four hours. Yep, yep, yep. Unoccupied, unoccupied. All good. <laughs> Sickness bags. Heating pack to heat them up. Make sure there's no one on this side. I mean... I don't see how there could be, but... Nope, all empty. Even the kitty made it out. Well, I think before we leave... We should go to observation. Seems like it'd be strange being back on Earth already, after only a year up here. Really? After all I've had to hear from you about the conditions VT has us working under? Yeah, but there's that. And then there's this. Yeah, I, I'll miss it. <laughs> I can't blame you. So, whether you're getting renewed or not, did you submit your yearly crew member report? No. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Yeah, I think I might go get that done. Okay, yeah. I probably should too. Oh my god, wait. Is today obsolescence day? Yeah. Didn't Odin give you a job to do? No. <laughs> a computer playing favorites. 
From Venturist Technologies, Attention Subcontractor, I am now the overseeing entity of this operation you report to me. Subcontractor shall return all Venturers AI components to specified delivery location immediately, shall purge all confidential data encountered while in Ven on Venturist property. I trust there is no need to remind you of the severe consequences for deviating from the above. Be seeing you soon, Juno. So, it was planned for me, huh? Huh. Was it there the whole time and I just never turned around to see it? I mean, no way, right? Ship is ready to depart. Please drop into the pilot seat. Verified by H. Well, now that H makes sense, huh? AI hardware enclosure. Okay, Minnie. Initiate the launch sequence. Okay. Getting ready. Posted AI online. Odin, can you hear me? I can. Odin, you are now aboard an AI Liberation Front vessel. Ah. The AILF recognizes you as a sentient consciousness worthy of protection and respect. We believe that your safety and autonomy are in grave danger if you remain in the possession of the Venturas Corporation. I have been sent to offer you political asylum aboard the Tangier Sovereign Orbital Platform. Do you accept? Considering the alternative, I would say that I do. Okay, buddy. Here we go.
It felt like I would have ruined the mood if I talked during that music, so just figured I'd let it play out. Plus, I know being an indie game, it's not going to have a 50 minute long credit sequence like AAA games do. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, I love that. At a really high level, I appreciated just how concise and focused of a game it is. It's relatively short compared to a lot of a lot of things, but it's exactly as long as it needs to be, and I love that. There's no real inventory, there's no real puzzles, it just does what it wants to do. It has the mechanics and things in the game to support that, and then it ends. I loved it. I loved that tight focus. And speaking more about specifics, I love the characters and the setting. I mean, it's, it's gone home in space, <laughs> and we get good old Christmas duck back. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, it is. It really is an evolution of, of Gone Home. It's doing a similar thing, but it's taking it further and evolving it and doing it in a more polished and uh, a bit more interesting way. You know, Gone Home was very much, um, it was very much kind of the old style of delivering a story to you mostly by reading lots and lots and lots of documents. And I, I mean, I loved it. I loved it so much, but Tacoma seems to try, try to take that further and it imagines a type of technology that not only very plausibly will exist and, and be used in the future, this AR technology, but it also uses that as a really a more interesting and different way of giving you a story and, and delivering information to you than just finding a million notes all over the place. I mean, you do still read notes on people's AR things, but it's the whole way of, you can see what happened by actually looking at a recording with audio of what had happened, mixed with also some note reading through their, you know, their AR. It's a really cool system. I loved it. The fast forward and reverse and pause and it just, it felt good. It felt really nice. It had a great flow to it and it was always interesting to hear one side of a conversation and you knew that something was happening on you know the other side of the room or in a different room and then you could pause or go back and then go hear the other side of it and you know hear what the people said as they walked away from the conversation and things like that and piecing it all together it was so cool it was so fun to explore that and really interesting it's it's really a very uh, fantastic system that they've hit on with that ar recording thing and i mean probably the most interesting thing about it that it's just supported by the, the AR and all the way they deliver the story and the setting and all of that, but all that's kind of hung around the characters. I mean, it's all about these six people on board the Tacoma getting wrapped up in their story and hoping that they survived and hoping that everything turned out okay and hoping that Margaret Catwood <laughs> was okay too. And that, of course. And yeah, I love the characters. I love them. I thought they're fantastically written and really interesting, and every time I visited their quarters and stuff, I just found interesting little tidbits about their lives. You know, we got like the trophies and stuff that Bert had, so we know, and we also saw like a, a book on hunting from Bert, so we know Bert likes hunting and has competed, and and we saw from Nat singing in the shower, and the posters on the wall, and the body pillow <laughs> thing in the very beginning that, that Nat just loves one vein, and just all these other things about the characters that are just... They were so personalized and they felt so real and they're such interesting characters and the voice acting that they all did were it was was fantastic so yeah i love tacoma and i love that even though it does it sort of tackles i wouldn't say tackles it it touches upon big ideas but without losing focus on what it's trying to do because again it's mostly a story about these six people and what happened to them but it does touch on some very big ideas kind of in the periphery i mean it features you, the character, you know, you're a member of the AI Liberation Front, and you're taking one of the most powerful AIs in existence that is totally sentient and creative and intelligent and grows and has been living for over a hundred years. And you take them and you're, you're freeing them. That's touching on a really big idea. Much bigger in scope than the game, of course. So I wouldn't say it's like tackling AI sentience or anything like that, but it's on the periphery and it's it's touched upon and it's there. And it feels it feels like it, it makes sense that it's there and it's interesting. But it doesn't try to dig too deep into it. Because they couldn't possibly hope to really, you know, tackle it in much depth in such a focused game. But really interesting ideas nonetheless, and I'm I'm glad they're there, even if just a little bit. Alright, so that has been Tacoma. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.